Hi guys, I'm Maylin Dovan, certified athletic therapist and founder of Rehab U Movement and Performance Therapy. Um, we're going to talk about managing rotator cuff issues. Now, whether you're a therapist uh, or a trainer, you've dealt with people who have a rotator cuff issue. So uh, perhaps as a trainer, people will come to you and say, you know, I have shoulder pain, I went to my doctor, um, he told me I had uh, rotator cuff tendonitis. Um, and, or you have people who are coming to you to say, well, I was told that I had a rotator cuff tendonitis and I was given this uh, external rotation exercise. Okay, so we need to do a little bit better than that in our interventions, whether uh, we're on the therapy uh, side of it or the training side of it. The idea is we need to know specifically uh, which muscle is more irritable so that we can properly really adjust our interventions based on that. So uh, the idea of understanding the pain triggers um, and how these pain triggers present. So we understand which exercises are going to be painful and need to be managed accordingly. Um, and in fact, the rotator cuff is four different muscles and they're not all external rotators. So if we do this external rotation exercise, we're not getting all of the muscles of the rotator cuff, okay? Um, so rotator cuff, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. The subscapularis being the one that's the largest and strongest and is an internal rotator, okay? So we're not getting that muscle when we're doing the classic uh, rotator cuff exercises. Um, the other thing about um, simple rotator cuff exercises is if they're done with the arm by the side, which often people say is better because you don't have to have the scapular stability. Um, if it's a supraspinatus thing, then that can be irritable for the supraspinatus because it's getting compressed, okay? So the tendon is getting uh, compressed and tendons don't like compression, okay? So the idea of having a better idea of which muscle is it is, uh, interesting from a, from a therapist perspective and a training perspective so that you can adjust accordingly, okay? So we're gonna go run through the different provocative tests for the four different uh, rotator cuff muscles and I'm gonna show you a variation that you can do um, if you're in the trainer scope of practice and you're not doing hands-on provocative testing, okay? So um, again, these are not the only tests you do. Okay, but they're part of an assessment to kind of give you an idea of what you're dealing with. So for the supraspinatus, um, more often than not, we'll use the empty can test where we get uh, our client into abduction with full internal rotation. Now the abduction is in the scapular plane. So we're not out here on the side and we're not all the way in the front here. So kind of in the middle in the plane of the scapula. Full internal rotation, and then we're gonna get him to resist adduction, okay? And we're trying to see if that triggers a little bit of his pain, which with the supraspinatus will often be on the top of the shoulder, a little bit on the front, sometimes into the um, medial or anterior deltoid, okay? So again, uh, you're dealing with either it's like not fun or someone will just drop, which would be a, a, more, a more serious issue. Okay, here we're just trying to see uh, which muscle is more irritable. If you're in a trainer scope of practice um, and you're not comfortable doing this provocation, you could have them hold, bring a dumbbell, raise a dumbbell up in this position, in that same position with a full internal rotation and see if that's a little bit irritable for them and that would give you an idea. Okay, with infraspinatus, and teres minor, they're, they're typically more difficult. They're your posterior cuff and they're a little bit more difficult to individualize or isolate, so to speak. Uh, we typically use two different tests. Uh, there's resisted internal rotation at zero degrees of abduction. So I'm pushing him into internal rotation and he's resisting. And I'm trying to see if that reproduces pain, which is often on the lateral um, aspect of the deltoid. That's kind of where they'll feel the pain. Uh, or you can use hornblower sign, which is up here at 90 degrees of um, abduction. And again, resisting internal rotation in this position and see if that reproduces his pain. Again, if you're in a trainer scope of practice, then you can certainly have them do this themselves. So he would go to the squat rack and push into the squat rack, into external rotation in that position see if that reproduces symptoms or in external rotation up, yes, at 90 degrees and he's gonna push into the squat rack there, okay? And see if that reproduces his symptoms. 
Now the test for the subscapularis is simple and you don't even have to touch the person. So, so you get him to put the back of his hand in the lower back and then lift the hand up off the back, lift off, okay? And see if that reproduces his pain, which for the subscapularis is typically in the front of the shoulder and then sometimes into the bicipital groove. So they'll have really palpable pain, okay? So it's, sometimes it's a little bit more diffuse with the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and with the subscapularis, it'll really be like they can literally put their finger on it. Um, and sometimes there's biceps involvement as well, okay? Now that being said, there, there is interdigitation of all the tendons of the rotator cuff. So uh, typically, you know, you might, you might think it's just supraspinatus, but infraspinatus is involved as well. The idea is we're not trying to diagnose here, we're just trying to see which movements are more irritable. We know if we're dealing with supraspinatus, movements in abduction are going to be more, more irritable, but we don't want to be down here either because we don't want to compress the tendon, right? If we're de dealing with subscapularis, it's internal rotation stuff that's going to be more irritable, okay? So um, if we're doing horizontal rowing, we're going to have to take that into consideration. So it's just to have an idea of which muscles are more irritable, not to diagnose, but just to say, okay, I understand that this, this, this movement is gonna be more difficult because that muscle is really irritable, or this, this position is gonna further irritate that tendon and I need to stay away from that position for the time being, okay? So that's the idea with this testing for uh, pain triggers of the rotator cuff and being able to differentiate a little bit which, which muscle we're, we're dealing with, which muscle is most irritable.